Welcome to this lecture. Today we're going to talk about the production potential and how we can use production potential uh, application, production applica potential curves to compute um, plateau duration and also production profile. So if you look at uh, the, um, the uh, plan for development and operations provided by Energien for the Carician Tanin field, you find out this figure, 664. And you see in this figure you have something, you have the production profile, the color indicates from which reservoir you're producing, Carish or Tanin. Uh, but also you have some other figure on the other values on the chart that tell you uh, it's called potential. So this potential, let, let's take this um, image. Okay, so you have this, what I'm referring to is this curve, the dotted line that it tells you potential. Okay, and you see that actually a, um, here uh, the potential essentially becomes equal when the plateau rate, uh, when you end the plateau period, actually here the potential starts to, the, the rate starts to decrease. And also the same thing here that you have some potential and when a, uh, the potential is equal to the plateau rate then you start some decline. So the potential is, if you have a uh, potential is production potential is the maximum rate the production system can deliver at a given time. Okay, so if we look back and, uh, to our system here, we have, we know because we are producing a plateau, actually that uh, we are choking these wells, but if we let them produce as much as they can, actually they will be able to produce not 300, okay, but they will be able to produce 870, okay, much, much higher, a value which is uh, 2.5 times higher. Okay, so that's exactly the potential, and uh, each time uh, then I will have a different value because essentially I, I, um, the reservoir pressure is going down in this case. So if I have, let's put a system like what we have here, Kadish are essentially three wells, they produce to a common manifold and then I have a pipe, in this case are two parallel pipes, so just for simplicity we're going to put just one pipe, then we have two valves, then we end up on the separator. So simply I obtain the potential at any given time by putting setting these two to fully open. If I had a different production system, like for example I had a system with uh, oil uh, wells, okay, I might have to do the same, you're simply opening the, the choke. If I have, for example, a system where I have my wells, each one they have a choke. Let's make the choke a single a bit better. Okay, I have the same thing that will to produce, to calculate the potential, Q uh, production potential, K will be equal to fully opened. Okay, sometimes I have in this well, sometimes I might have, for example, gas lift. Okay, so I might have gas lift injection on these wells. I have one, two, three wells with gas lift. So then I will need to do an optimization just to make sure to maximize QO okay, by changing Q gas injection one, Q gas 
injection two and give gas injection three. Okay, but essentially it's to try to produce as the word as the definition says to try to produce as much as possible maximum rate the production system can deliver at a given time. So I, I have to make sure that I achieve that. But essentially, uh, production potential But the production just just before that the production potential is also used in reservoir simulation okay remember that if we have our reservoir model i'm going to make it very uh, rough here but if we have a series of grid cells For example, we have a reservoir model and we have our well bore, which is located here, well one. Okay, we put two types of boundary conditions on well one. Boundary conditions. Okay, we have a target rate that depending what, what type of well it is, if it's an oil well or a gas well, I can put a target rate, that's what I want to produce. But I can also say a PWF minimum a minimum flowing bottom hole pressure. Okay, so what the simulator does in every time step, okay, the simulator first tries with PWF minimum, okay, and then calculates a Q that this Q is often called the potential. Okay, because say that's the minimum pressure that I can achieve at the bottom hole, Okay, you don't know how that will be achieved, but actually it's a minimum that I can achieve that I need at least to flow against the rest of the system that is often neglected. Okay, I have the well board, the pipeline, and the separator, but it's the minimum I need to flow against all of that. And it should be variable, of course, but people sometimes assume that it's constant. So in each time step, I say I try this PWF and I obtain a QO potential. So then I say if QO potential is greater than Q target, okay, then that means that Q target can be produced. Okay, and then I the, the simulator starts to change or maybe to increase PWF until the Q of the well is equal to the Q target. If on the other hand I have another possible outcome, if QO potential is actually less than the Q target, okay, less, we can say less or equal, then Q target cannot be produced and then I simply say that PWF is equal to PWF min to the minimum. Okay. So this is a number that I typically is printed by reservoir simulator and it's saying that if I apply this minimum pressure that you provided me with, then this is your potential, that's the maximum rate I can get. If this potential is more than the target, that means that the target can be produced. The only thing is I need to find out which pressure I need to apply. Otherwise, if not, if it's less than the target, then that means that the Q target cannot be produced and then I say Q PWF will be equal to the minimum. Again, the Q of the well will be equal to the Q potential. Okay, so it's a similar concept we use in reservoir simulator, but uh, in this case, we are neglecting the rest of the system, right? If you were going to calculate it in a, our, our simple production system, we have a well, PR, PWF, okay, as I explained before, pipeline, and separator 
Okay, so you simply assume, you simply have this system. Let's say we make equilibrium at the wheelhead. Okay, we have one curve that represents IPR and PPR, and you have another curve which represents pipeline. We can call it PPR. And simply you find the intersection of the two, and this will be your potential. Okay, and you can produce at any rate below that if you want by choking. Okay, this will be if you want to produce a this Q star, then you have to use this delta P of the choke. But actually you have an upper bound that you can produce. Okay, you cannot produce more than that. If you want to produce more, you want to change your system. So production potential, the second point I want to make is that production potential is actually a function of reservoir pressure. Okay, because actually what really tells me this intersection usually uh, is, for example, the what has the time effect in this intersection is actually the IPR, right? And usually it's by due to the reservoir pressure. If reservoir pressure goes down, then I will have another curve, which will be like that. Okay, and then I will have another potential. But as we all, all kind of... Uh, Sometimes we can say that reservoir pressure and reservoir pressure is a function, is usually a function of cumulative production. We are going to put cumulative production as QP. We can QP generic can be GP, which is for gas, or it can be NP, which is for oil. Okay, but can be simply if you imagine the reservoir has a tank, as much as I take out of the tank, it, that's how the pressure is going to go down. Okay, if I, if I visualize my reservoir has a tank, and here I have reservoir pressure. So the pressure in the tank, in what we call here the reservoir, will depend on actually how much is left in how much uh, material is in that tank. Okay, so we can say that PR is a function of uh, in very uh, simply speaking of Q what was originally in the tank minus QP which is what was has been produced so far okay so that that will be a PR at any given time T will be a function of Q minus QP at any given time T okay, so that's how you have the time effect uh, in, in this equation okay but also we can say actually well it's not only a function of how much is left but it whole, it's also actually a function of how much is is produced so far okay because essentially here in this equation this q is a constant so you can either plot it with respect to um, what is the amount of of uh, fluid you have left which is this one or the amount of fluid that you have produced it will be equivalent simply because this value q is a constant so if you're going to plot that then you say pr as a function of qp will be something like this right or you can make another plot that will be pr as a function of q minus qp so this at the beginning uh, when QP is zero, that is actually maximum. Okay, so that will be Q. Okay, and then you're going to have PR. And then when you start to, this value starts, you start to produce, actually you go in the opposite direction and then PR starts to go down. Yeah, and then you reach some value of Q minus QPU, which is the ultimate um, uh, production okay but in in so i think it's more intuitive to use this chart because then you see how much i produce then the reservoir pressure is going down but you can also make it actually in terms of how much is left in the tank 
So essentially what we have done so far is that the, we say production potential is a function of PR, okay? Because we saw that intersection is a function of PR. And we could actually try to make that, we can say that the QPP is a function of PR. Okay, and if it's very high, okay, so if PR, let's say, is initial reservoir pressure, then it have a very high potential. But then when this pressure starts to go down, the production potential usually also goes down, okay, until I reach PR at another time. So you have that equation relating production potential with reservoir pressure. Okay, and we don't know if it's linear, it might be a bit non-linear because actually it depends on the intersection of these two, okay, which is are both are non-linear. And we have this equation which depends on pressure, reservoir pressure has a function of cumulative production. So what we are going to make actually this tells you that potential, we can make a new a new curve to remove the pressure, reservoir pressure from the picture, and we can say that production potential is a function of QP, cumulative production. And it will be something like that. Okay, so this curve is a sum of this curve. Plus this curve. And, and the shape of this curve is going to depend on the type of system. Okay, so for example, for, for a dry gas. Uh, and for example, undersaturated oil. Then we might have uh, is is typically linear. Okay, so QPP versus QP, typically a straight line. Okay, if we have for example for as undersaturated oil. Okay. You have a more nonlinear behavior. Okay, we have maybe something like this. Mm -hmm. If we have water injection for 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 systems undergoing water injection, maybe the curve looks a bit more like this for oil so this will be oil for water injection yeah but so you have different shapes of this uh, potential mm. and essentially it's important because we, we can use these curves or this potential for two different purposes so production potential curves can be used for, so one of the things is to determine plateau duration. And the other application is to uh, estimate production profile. Okay, so let's see first the first application that we're going to use in this course. So if we have our Q production potential, let's assume that is the linear okay, production potential versus QP and you have this curve. Okay, and you have some given plateau rate. Okay, that is Q star, let's say. Okay. Of course, Q star has to be less than what the system can produce okay, at, at, with no production initially. Okay, let's say Q star is someplace here. So when is plateau going to end? As you saw in the chart from the uh, video of Karish and Tanin, okay, we had the plateau production, Q plateau, and then we had a decline. And if you see uh, the behavior of the potential was something like this, 
and then at this point actually the potential was equal to th this was the QPP this was the Q of the field okay this is time this is Q okay so actually we know that the end of the plateau comes when the system can deliver exactly the plateau rate okay exactly the um, uh, the, the, the specified plateau rate why because at that point in time then the potential probably is going to continue decreasing because you're taking more material so reservoir pressure will decrease the potential then will become lower than what you want to produce the plateau rate so if we say here our q star on this chart okay we knock the curve and then we go on the x-axis and then we read this qp star so QP star is the cumulative production at which at which the end of the plateau will occur. exactly at that at that QP star but how do we calculate we actually need the time we don't need the cumulative production so then we can back because we have been producing all from zero all the way to QP star has been produced at constant rate okay, Q star so then we can say that the duration of the plateau is going to be equal to QP star divided by Q star okay that's going to give me a, uh, a unit for example in days okay if this guy is in standard cubic meter per day and this guy is in standard cubic meter okay so if you want to get the, the, the value in gears then you can for example divide again by the T of time okay the number of the uptime, remember we say, is the number of operational days per year. Okay, so that's very nice. We, if you simply we can make that curve for one case, okay. and uh, then to find out when plateau is going to end, simply we come to that curve, we enter with the plateau rate. We knock the curve, we see the value in the x-axis, and then from there, with this value, we compute the duration of the plateau. Okay. Another thing we can do is to calculate production profile, and I'm going to a, uh, show you with a PowerPoint slide, I think, because it's uh, more uh, interactive. So let's say you have, this is the production potential curve, that this is for a, um, undersaturated oil reservoir undergoing water injection as I presented uh, before okay this is from the thesis of um, of um, um, a master student that he was working with me a few years back okay so first you define a time step of X number of days you can do it in a monthly basis 30 days you can make it in six months you can make it in one year okay then you go for time zero so you say well in this time I can produce this much okay then you decide which number you want to produce you can produce any number from there all the way to that it can be plateau mode so you can produce 10,000 all the time or you could be another number okay then you say well that's that value will be able to produce and then there could be some other more complicated uh, approaches but one thing I say well, I assume that I will be able to produce that rate for a certain number of fixed days. Okay, so I say assuming that that value will remain constant. With that Q and then with the number of days produced, I now have the new NP. Okay, for the previous case will be simply QP times X because I'm departing from the origin. And then I go again to the curve and then I read now the new QO max. Which you see before I had close to 20,000, but now it's something like 16,000. So now again, I decide, do I want to produce, which rate do I want to produce between 
uh, 0 and 16,000. And then I choose that rate, for example, and it could be the same as before. Okay. <clears throat> but it could happen also that at that time, for example, 16,000, I want to produce a value which is bigger. Okay, actually, I, it's not 16,000, but I would like to produce 18,000. If that's the case, I know here I cannot produce, then I could maybe produce just a 16,000. Okay, so that's how I use this curve to generate production profiles. I all the time check, calculate NP, check here what is the maximum value, and then produce anything below that. If the value I want to produce is below that, it's fine. But if the value I want to produce is above that, I cannot produce that anymore, and I produce as, as much as I can. Uh, also, one thing, so the, the production potential is affected by um, changes to the production system. Okay, so for example, if you add more wells, okay, you have for example, your QPP versus QP, and then you have one curve, which maybe looks like that for N1 wells. Okay, but then, uh, so what happens when you increase the number of wells is essentially I'm able to produce more for the same QP because I have more wells and then I can have more production. So it will be something like that, okay, N2 wells bigger than n1 and usually what happens is that i don't uh, increase a um, i simply don't in, don't have the a constant number of wells during the life of the field so it could happen that i have initially some i i have initially this curve and at some point in time i drill more one more well and then i'm following that curve so in that case the potential will be some sort of a a staggered curve with this uh, with these jumps okay what happens if I uh, for example uh, so that's changing the number of wells um, if I have a change uh, uh, the recovery factor or the recovery mechanism okay so for example initially I have very strong water injection that keeps the system um, uh, undersaturated, but then at some point I have I enter into saturation and I have a change of trend. Okay, so in this point, I might have from here was a water injection. Okay, and from here it was um, a solution gas dry. Okay, so it might also change in the. Uh, in the um, <coughs> uh, along so al along the curve, we have another type of change, which is a uh, with if for example the Q is uh, changes, okay, changes in initial uh, volumes in place of oil or water. We have QPP, and for example, if we have some Q, it might might be, be like that Q1, okay, and if I have a uh, a bigger volume. That means that I can remove, remember this is QP, so that means that I can remove the same, um, remove more material and then achieve the same reservoir pressure, okay? Remember reservoir pressure is usually a function of recovery factor, okay? So if a, um, so we have recovery factor, uh, so if we have a big reservoir, recovery factor one will be defined by QP divided by Q1, and if we have a small res uh, big reservoir, recovery factor 2 will be defined as QP divided by Q2, okay? So in this case, the recovery factor is going to be smaller. RF2 is going to be actually smaller than RF1, okay? Therefore, that means that I can go to much 
say uh, something like this okay with q2 that means that i can get the same potential for much more production because um, reservoir pressure hasn't declined that much okay if the reservoir is small then i will reach that reservoir pressure very quickly okay with less production but if the reservoir is huge then it will take more production to reach the same recovery factor and to reach the same reservoir pressure okay so that's how the curve it's um is is changing uh, the recovery factor is uh, the uh, product production potential is changing uh so be, be careful if you're going to use these curves um they they are affected by the changes to the production system okay here we saw a few examples if we change the number of wells for example if this also applies if you make wells more productive somehow you increase the productivity of the well or you change the tubing you will have a change a shift in that curve for example if the tubing gets plugged at some point then you will have a drop uh, in, in the curve okay this applies on the recovery mechanism if it's changed midway then the trend will change or also uh, if you change the reserves in place they turn out to be bigger than expected this also is changing the curve So let's um, uh, so if we say if we assume that the production potential is linear, so let's see one example. We say that Q P P is a function of minus M of Q P plus Q P P O. Okay, which will be we have a point here which we're going to call Q P P O, and then we have a uh, straight line minus m qp okay so let's say we want to produce using this equation we want to derive analytically the production profile derive analytically the q of the field versus time okay from QPP mm -hmm. and we know that for so Q of the field we know that it will be an equation like that so first it will be equal to Q plateau okay for time less than the equal to the time of the plateau okay that we already know how to calculate it we just calculated before we said that is when the Q plateau is equal to the q potential that means when it's equal to minus m qp star plus qppo okay so then i simply clear qp q plateau qppo minus q plateau divided by m that would be qp star Yes, clearing out um, the QP star, that the point, if you remember Q, Q plateau, where it's equal to the potential, this will be QP star. Okay, and then to find out the duration of the plateau, I simply say QP T plateau is equal to QP divided by Q plateau, okay, and that will be Q P P O minus one divided by Q plateau. Okay, one over M. Okay, so that's the number we are going to use here. This Q plateau will be Q P P O divided by Q plateau minus one, one over M. Okay, so we know it, it's very simple. So if we have the expression of the potential, we have this two numbers so then we can say well simply if you want to produce a plateau rate you can produce up to this time 
Okay, so what happens when we are at for t greater than this t plus n? Okay, at that point we know that the q of the field is going to be equal to the q of the potential. Okay, because I reach the end of the plateau and then from there uh, I um, Okay, so let, let's put that here. Because at that point, I have exactly it. I want to. It will be equal to the to the potential. Okay, so that let's take a. Um, okay, so let's say that QPP is equal to minus m, and here I have two parts. Okay, so here I have the first part that was produced at plateau, QP star, plus a, um, this will be uh, the QP from QP star to um, on and on. Okay, so that will be an integral from T plateau to a, um, to T, a generic T time T of Q, and in this case, what I'm producing is actually plateau rate, okay? So this, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm splitting this equation. So here I have the production potential, like here I have this M coefficient, but then I say, well, for this period, when the T is greater than the plateau, this Q will be divided in two parts. One is going to be this QP up until plateau, and then you will have this integral from T plateau to T of the potential, because I will be producing at potential. Okay, plus Q P P O. And then let's uh, just substitute Q P P minus M for times Q P P O minus Q plateau divided by M. Okay, plus minus M. So here you see that this term actually cancels out with this term. Okay, and you end up with that the Q plateau is equal to M times Q plateau minus M integral of T plateau to T Q P P D T. So a solution to this equation, this is a um, integral uh, integral differential equation okay that I can solve uh, I think you have to derive uh, for example uh, both sides and then you uh, then you solve it but essentially we can say that we can propose a solution to this equation is that the Q a, uh, of the field, okay, will be equal to Q plateau times E to the power of minus M T minus T plateau. Okay, that's a solution of QPP, which is equal to Q of the field is equal to the Q plateau E minus M T minus T plateau. Okay, and you can substitute and see that actually it uh, it 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 uh, it works. Okay. Okay. So then we have what we needed for this uh, for our we can say that the Q of the field for any given time will be Q plateau if time is less or equal to T plateau and T plateau we said that is uh, Q PPO divided by Q plateau minus one, one over M or if T is greater than the plateau 
then you have that is q plateau e to the minus m t minus p plateau okay so that essentially tells you if you're going to plot this function you have an exponential decline okay so you have here q of the field and then you have one part which in which is constant then you reach the end of the plateau and then you have simply an exponential decline okay which is this e minus m t minus p plateau okay when this guy here is zero when i'm exactly at plateau n then this will be simply q plateau and then when this times coefficient starts to get bigger then that means that this guy is going to get smaller Okay, because is essentially this guy is is one over e to t minus t plateau. Okay, so every time that this guy gets big, so then this guy gets big, but then uh, it means that it becomes smaller. Okay, so I have an exponential decline. So what we saw from this example, from this derivation, is that if you have a, a linear production potential. Okay, that which we saw we saw is the case for, or I told you is the case for dry gas, or for um, undersaturated oil. That will say that you will have if you produce at plateau and there you produce exactly at potential, then that will mean that you have a uh, constant rate and then you have an exponential decline. If you have different shapes, if you have uh, potentials of different other other shapes like we mentioned here then you have a different type of decline. There was an error in the notes, so here I realized that in, in this <coughs> equation, when I'm multiplying, uh, doing this product, so then actually the m goes away. So then this m shouldn't be here.